and God is keeping us. Praise the Lord. And God is providing for us. And we thank him for his many blessings. Praise God. And that's what I want us to continue to be focused on. And that's what we should be focused on, upon the things that God is doing and how God is providing for us in this time. Praise God. And the doors that he's opening and ways that he's making. Praise God. God is making a way. God is making a way. God is what's happening. God is making a way. And we we just praise him and give him the glory tonight for his loving kindness. Praise God. And so let's worship God. Let's lift him up. Let's continue to thank him for all things. Praise the Lord. Uh, let's read some scripture tonight from Psalms 33. His opening scripture, 33 and 8. And it says, let all the earth fear the Lord, that all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel, the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of people of not effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he has chosen for his inheritance. The Lord looketh from heaven, he behold all the sons of men. From the place of his habitation, he looks upon all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashions their heart alike. He consider all their works. There is no king saved by the multitude of hosts. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. A horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great power. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy to deliver their souls from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul wait for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our hearts shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thou mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. Praise God. Father God, we thank you tonight. For truly we hope in you tonight. We thank you, Lord God, for all things. Our hearts, our hearts rejoice in you tonight, for you have blessed us. We thank you, Lord God, for being a deliverer. We thank you tonight, Lord God, for the ways you have made and the doors you open, Lord God. We thank you for your counsel tonight, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for you have loved us with a great love, a great love, a perfect love that cast out all fear. You have manifested your love toward us. You commanded your love toward us through your son, Jesus Christ. For you gave the best that you had. You gave your only begotten son for us, Lord God. Undeserving as we were, Lord God, you manifested your love. You manifested your glory. You manifested your grace toward us, Lord. We thank you today. We thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. For all things, Lord God, for all things, we just, we're just going to continue to worship you. Our souls are glad in you, praise God. And we're going to rejoice at your name. We're going to shout for joy. Praise the Lord. We're going to shout for joy. For our victory is in you tonight. Our victory is in you tonight, and we're going to hold fast to your word. We're going to hold fast to your truth. We're going to hold fast to your mighty, mighty promises, Lord God. We thank you tonight. Just continue to save, Lord God. Continue to bring men out of darkness into a glorious light, Lord. Oh, Father, use us as your people. Use us, Lord God, as your, as your people in this earth, Lord God, that are going forth Telling men about your goodness with no fear, no doubt, Lord God. Just lifting you up. We pray tonight that every heart and every mind be encouraged to trust in you, to believe in you, to hold on to you. And Lord, not doubt, not move away from your greatness, not move away from your peace, Lord God. 
Oh, we thank you, Father. We thank you tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We praise God tonight for the Lord is good. And we praise him for his goodness. We praise him for his goodness. Praise God. And we want to fear the Lord. That means we want to give him reverence and love. Praise God. We want to rejoice in him. We read tonight for the scripture says in Psalms 33 and 8, let all the earth, all the earth fear the Lord. All the earth reverence God. That's not talking about being afraid of God, fearing him as we may uh, know fear. It's talking about giving honor to him, to, to give reverence to him as, as a father. Praise God as the creator, you know, to honor him, to submit ourselves to him. So it says to us, and let us fear God, that all the heaviness of and heaviness of the earth of the world stand in all. Stand in all. Because you know why? God is awesome. He is an awesome God. You know, men talk about the, the feats that men do and uh, the things people may do in sports and different things and how awesome they are. And they uh, talk about them and give give a God honor to them and lift them up. But nobody's nobody can be compare to our God. No one can compare to our God. No one can compare to his power. No one can compare to his might. No one can compare to his strength. Praise God. Because there's nobody like the Lord. The scripture said, who are you going to liken him to? Who? Who can you liken him to? Praise God. No one. No one can you liken him to. Because there's none like our God. He is the king of glory. He is the king of glory. And the things that God has said, he said, in the 11th verse, it says, the counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The things of God, listen, they stand forever. They don't fade away. They don't fade away. Praise the Lord. He said, heaven and earth will pay, fade away. Praise the Lord. But not, not one jot, not one tittle. Flesh is like grass. It fades away. But the word of God standeth forever. God's foundation standeth forever. So we thank him tonight, praise the Lord, for uh, this foundation that we have. And we want to continue to uh, be steadfast and we want to continue to look unto him because he is the author and he is the finisher of all things tonight. And we have to be uh, mindful of that and not allow the enemy to try to move us out of his glory. Not to allow the enemy, praise God, to stop us from holding fast to what God has said. Got to continue to look up. Praise God. David said, I lift my, my eyes. I lift my eyes. I look up unto the hills. I lift up, look up unto the God tonight. Psalms 121. And that's what we got to stay focused on. Stay focused on the things that he do. That's what found people. I said about being foundational people. We want to be people that are, that are standing and founded on the principles of God. Standing on the standing on the principles of God and looking at the things that God is able to do. Standing on all the power and might that's in him. We, listen to me tonight. We got everything that we need. We got everything that we need tonight to continue to move in God, to continue to stand in him, to continue to glory in him. Praise God. Stop looking at the things in this earth and thinking that we need all this stuff to to be happy, praise the Lord. You know, and the Bible keeps telling us that those things are temporal, aren't they? They, they fade away. We're, we're trusting, we're trying, we're, we're sitting here looking at things that fade. The things don't endure. They don't endure. They don't, they don't endure. We want to hold on to the things that endure. That's why Paul said, get a good hold. He said, fight the good fight of faith. Listen to me, and lay hold on things that are eternal. Second Peter 1 and 4 says, whereby are given unto us, given unto who? Unto us. Exceeding great and precious promises. God has given unto us. Exceeding, these are, I'm talking about believers. Exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature. 
God has given to us now to be partakers of the divine nature, to be, be partakers of divine nature. And that's why we have to be steadfast, hold to our profession, hold to, the, to our profession of faith, praise God, hold to what God has said. Hebrews 10 and 23 tells us to hold fast to our profession of faith without wavering. Let us hold fast. Let us hold fast the profession of faith without wavering, without wavering. Then there's some James talk about a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. James 1, talk about a double-minded man being unstable in all his ways. He says he's like a wave that's tossed to and fro. You know, he's driven by the wave. He's driven by the wind. Praise God. Uh, there is no foundation in his life. He says to us here, let us hold fast. Listen, this is this faith that God has given us in order for us to be those uh, faithful stewards that we've been talking about. In order for us to be those stewards of God, we've, we've got to be those that are holding fast to our profession. Holding fast. Hold, hold, to hold fast to something means having a firm grip on something or someone. Having a firm, listen, a firm grip. Firm grip. Praise God. Why do we need a firm grip on our faith? Why do we need a firm grip on, on our trust? Because there is a resistant, resistant presence that's around us, that's within us to give up and lose hope. That's why we gotta we gotta hold fast to this. Because there's things, that's resistance. The enemy comes to try to cause us to. To, to lose faith, to lose hope in God, to not trust him. And, it, and I tell you, it comes from our what we're looking at, what we're trusting in. That's why we got to continue to stay focused on him and all the things that he has said. Praise God. We got to trust in his truth and his word. We must be honest with God and say, Lord, I need you to strengthen me. Give me the things that I need in order for me to walk like you want me to walk. We've got to ask God to bless us with the faith to believe in his word, to trust in his word, to say, Lord, I believe in what you said. To hold fast to something. To hold fast to something means that we now, that, that now the value of what we have it means that what we what we holding to has value. What we're holding to has value. I'm holding fast to it because it has value. We must believe in our heart that God's word is true. What I'm holding to, I believe that it has value. That's why it, it, it is imperative, praise God, uh, that, that we that we look unto the Lord who is the author and the finisher of all things. That we, that, that we make sure, praise God, as good stewards, that, we're, that, we're, that we see the value in our commitment. There's a, the value in our commitment, praise God, that we are committed to God. We're committed to the things of God, praise the Lord. And we desire his, we desire his wisdom. We desire his truth. We, we're going to hold fast to his uh, holy word and not allow the winds and the storms and the trials of life to move us away from God has said, listen, I'm saying all this, why? Because we, we, God has, we have an assignment. We all have an assignment in the earth. That's why we got to make our calling and our election sure. We got to hold fast to the things that God has given us. Realize and begin to understand the value of it. That I've been called with a holy calling. I've been called with a great calling. Ephesians 4 and 1 said we got to walk worthy of this vocation, walk worthy of this calling. I've been called with a holy calling. I got to walk worthy of it. This is not just for the leadership or the pastor, whoever to walk worthy. This is for all of us to walk worthy of this calling. Because it's, listen, because we, because it says that God is the one that's going to get a reward to each and every one of us. We got to believe in our heart. This word of truth. We got to believe in our heart that what God has said is true. We got to hold fast to our profession, our confession, the promises. We got to hold fast to our beliefs that God 
in God and the things that God has said unto us. Lord, I trust you tonight. Lord, I'm believing in your word tonight. I'm not going to allow you to move me away. I'm not going to allow the enemy to move me away from the things, praise God, that, that, that you have said and the things that you have declared. The word of God tells us in 1 Corinthians 15 58, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. Be ye what? Steadfast. Stand fast. Stand steady. Stand fast. Stand steady. He said, be ye steadfast, unmovable. Is that something? He said, be steadfast and be unmovable. Don't let nothing move you away from your hope and glory. Don't let nothing move you from your trust, your faith that you have in God. He said, be what? Unmovable. Are we unmovable? Are we steadfast tonight? Listen. These are things that we have to ask ourselves. This is a checklist. This is a checklist. Am I steadfast? Am I unmovable? Am I holding fast to the things that God has said? Am I holding fast to the profession of my faith? This is a checklist. We, can't, we cannot be good stewards over the things of God. We cannot be faithful witnesses. We cannot go forth and tell men the truth if we're not holding, really holding fast to it. We, this, I always talk about this. We can do the church things because over years I've seen people do church stuff. They, they, they know the things to do in the building. They know how to do this. They know how to do that. Praise God. We got those things basically down pat. We got that in order. But the thing that's important is faithfulness. The thing that's important is that we love God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul. We love God with everything that's in us. That's what God wants. That's what God desires. We, that, we have, that we're having this faith and we're trusting God. We, understand, we, we begin to understand that real faith brings God into reality. Real faith brings God to reality. Real faith, through real faith, we begin to see God. We begin to know God. We begin to understand God by real faith. By having that real faith. And we got to, so we got to hold fast to our profession of faith. Praise God. Hoping and trusting in the things that God has said. So he says here, look at this checklist tonight. Checklist. Our checklist tonight, Hebrews 10 and 23, are we holding fast to the profession of our faith? Are we holding fast to the profession of our faith? Checklist. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. Therefore, my beloved brother, be ye what? Steadfast. Are we steadfast? Put that on the list. Are we being steadfast? If you don't got, you don't have the definition, look it up. Are you? If you're not standing fast, I've said I've given a definition. You want more? Go look it up. Praise God. Am I being steadfast? Am I unmovable? Are things in my life that are coming, that are happening, are moving me? That means I said before we want to be foundational people, and if we're founded on a rock. Things may beat up on us. And I'm not saying things are not going to beat. I'm not saying trouble won't come. You, you, you've been called. This is a warfare, man. This is a battle. We are in a battle. We are in a war. We have an enemy that hates us. We have an enemy, according to St. John 10, 10 and 10, that comes to kill, to steal, and destroy. He's the enemy. He's the enemy of your soul. So he, so he wants to destroy you. He wants to take you out. That's why you got to be steadfast in the things of God. Look unto him. Stay focused on all that he's saying to us. Praise God. Eat this word. Eat it. Praise God. That's what Jesus said. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He un Jesus knew that in order for us to be steadfast, we needed this word in our heart. 
We need it in our heart to carry us on, to take us through. So we're able to fight the good fight of faith. So, we're, so we'll be able to endure in these last days. Praise God. I'm not talking about a headache and somebody talking about you. I'm saying endure the enemy, the things the enemy are trying to bring up on your life. This is necessary if we're going to call ourselves the people of God. If we're going to call ourselves the children of God tonight. Praise the Lord. He says, stand fast. He says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. Am I abounding? Am I unmovable? Am I abounding? That means am I growing in the things of God? Am I growing in the work? He's abounding in what? Look what he says. This is what we've been talking about, being faithful stewards. He says, I'm abounding in the work. I'm abounding in the work of God. Am I doing what thus says the Lord? Am I, am I being obedient to the call of God? Am I being obedient to the call of God? Am I walking like God has said for me to walk? Am I walking, praise God, steadfast? Look what he says. Part of the checklist. He says, being steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. He says, for as much as ye know that your labor is not what in vain. So your, your labor is not in vain. He said, you're not laboring in vain. Everything we're doing for God is working for us. Everything that we're doing for God has, has a meaning, has a purpose. Everything that we're doing for God. If it's according to his will, it's, it, according to his purpose, it has meaning. That's why we got to continue to do what God has said. We got to continue to look in him. Look at Romans. And we, we know the scripture pretty well. Most people do Romans 8 and 28. Praise the Lord. But it says all things work together for good. Things are working for good. It has a purpose. Things are working for good for those that are what? Those that are, that are called by God. Those that are called according to his purpose, those that love him, those that are calling according to his purpose, things do what they work. It works together. It works together for good, for good, for good, for, for the good of the kingdom. It works together for the good of the kingdom. It works together to promote the kingdom. Praise God. For those that are called according to his purpose. According to what? To his purpose. We call for his purpose. We call according to his purpose. So we got to be steadfast, always abounding in the work. Our labor is what? Not in vain. Hmm? Our labor is not in vain. Galatians 5 and 1 says for tells us to what? To be steadfast. Be steadfast. Again. Be steadfast, therefore, in the liberty wherever Christ has what set us free. He's made us free. Christ has made us free. He has set us free from the yoke of bondage. He's freed us, praise God, from the hand of the enemy. Look what he says to us again in 2 Peter. 2 Peter 1. Wherefore are given it for one and four, excuse me. One and four, wherefore, wherefore, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. He said, we have escaped what? The corruption through Christ. We have escaped the corruption that is in the world. That corruption comes, comes he said, it comes through what? Through lust. The lust and desire of men is what brings forth corruption. The lust of men, the lust of power, lust of wealth, praise God. All those things that men lust for, that we lust for, it brings forth corruption. He said, but you have escaped that corruption because of him. And that's why we got to hold fast to the things of God. He's given us great and precious promises. We have escaped the we have escaped the corruption. That's why I'm saying you got to stand fast in the liberty of Christ to set you free. I've escaped. 
I don't, that's what, listen to what he says. He says, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. He said, he said we've been set free. We have freedom. Listen, th- listen, there's a burden, a burden of freedom. There's a burden of freedom. We have to be, we have to do what we have to do in order to stay, to be steadfast in the things of God. In order for us to walk like God say. Listen, and this 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 is uh personal. This is personal. We may have certain things we may sometimes call. Uh, a, a corporate fast, but you can't wait for the pastor or someone to call a fast, call a corporate fast, because sometimes you need to fast and pray. You can't wait for Bible study to start reading the Bible. You can't wait to church start or when the praise team get there to start to start worshiping God. Listen, this is what you do. This has to be your lifestyle. You have to be living not just a holy life when you come around the people of God and then you want to look righteous and, and, and speak about things of, of righteousness, praise God. And all of a sudden your, your, uh, uh, your, your, your vocabulary and everything is, is different because now I'm around the people of God, around the church folks. This is the way I live. This is in me, regardless of where I am. Regardless of what I do, it's in me to live like God. It's in me to do the will of God. That's why it it has to be a spiritual birth. It has to be a spiritual birth. It has to be a birth in your spirit, a birth in your heart. And it's a birth through the word. That birth comes through the word of God. And that word continues to have a process in my life. It begins to do things. And that's what David said, had in my heart. So I won't sin against you. Because he, he began to understand what it took to live for God, to serve God, to worship God. Building big temples and building on doing all these other things don't mean anything if we're not, if we don't, if we're not serving God like he wants to be served. We're not loving God like we want, like he wants to be loved. He says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where Christ has made us free and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. He says, stand fast in what in the things of God. Stand fast in the things of the Lord. The things that God has given us. This has to be in my life. And I listen, it has to be a, a, a daily mindset in me to want to worship and to praise God. Not a once in a while, not when I just, things happen to me that I want to find some scriptures. But I got to be want to be steadfast right now. We're going to clear, close on, on uh, Philippians 1 and 27. And Philippians 1 and 27 says, oh, let your conversation, that means conduct. That word conversation means conduct. Let your conduct be as it become of the gospel of Christ. Let it be as become of what? The gospel let it be. That's becoming God. Put this on the checklist. My my conduct has to be as that of the gospel, according to the word, according to what God has said. Let me conduct myself like this. Not don't be ashamed. Don't allow the enemy to shame you. Don't allow your friends or people around you to shame you. Let them, regardless what people say. You got to continue to be steadfast. You go to church too much. You do this too much. You know, I've never heard anybody tell anybody, you know what? That's that's in the world. They say you sin too much. None of my friends ever told me, you know what, man, we sin too much. Man, we doing this too much. No, we everybody want to turn it up. Everybody want to turn it up. Let's do more. Let's, let's just lose it. He said, let your conversation be as become of the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, Paul is speaking, I may hear of your affairs, that ye, that ye stand fast in one spirit, one mind, striving together in the faith of the gospel. 
what are we supposed to do? He said, that you're standing fast. This is what the church does, standing fast in one heart, one mind, one hope. Standing fast in the gospel, the good news. Manifesting and going forth, doing the work and the will of God. Oh, we thank the Lord tonight, saints. Hold fast. Be steadfast. Continue to work for God. Continue to labor for him. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you tonight for your goodness. Bless us that we can be the people that you are calling for. That we'll be about your business, Lord. For you have left us here to take care and to do your will. We thank you, Father, for all things tonight. And we, 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 we're trusting you tonight to save. And we're trusting you to bring men out of darkness into a glorious light. We thank you for being your witness tonight, those that are called out. Just keep our hearts and minds tonight. And Father God, we will eternally praise you. We will eternally praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you tonight. Let's keep praying for one another. Let's be steadfast. I love you tonight. Praise God. Amen. Sweet.